All right, guys, just getting the chat up here too, next to my screen so we can see that. Take questions. Hey, Miguel, you're you're in Portugal, right? Awesome, awesome joining us. We're just going to give guys like a minute or two here to, to join in. It's 8 p.m. here. Uh, Portugal, what are you, five hours ahead? Six hours ahead? Hey, Bryce. We're just getting set up. We're giving guys a couple of minutes, a minute or two, and then we'll we'll start to make some decisions. I haven't picked any characters yet. Uh, we're going to need six heroes for the game. Yeah, midnight, midnight. Zaloth the Faceless. That sounds like a Chaos Lord. Or actually, Faceless is probably Zinch. So I've picked the first mission, which we're, we're going to review. Um, it, it plays pretty quick. Yes, that's actually, he is a Necron Overlord. I'm always thinking of the Traveler or the Blind King. And for a guy that plays Necrons, I should have known that. Um, selected the first mission, but I'm going to let you guys pick with me the heroes we want to play. And... In theory, because we're expert zombie side invader players, we're going to throw in another abomination in there. And I'm going to let you guys pick it, the abomination to throw in. And we'll sort it up in the deck. So this way we'll face two. So even though it's the first intro mission, that should spice it up a little bit and um, make it a little bit harder for us to play. So have any of you guys played any of the zombie side games before? Modern, Black Plague, Invader. All right, cool, cool. We'll we'll do a quick little rules um, introduction for it, just because tactically what I was thinking about doing is every turn we'll all make decisions. You know, whoever's in the chat, where we're going to go, what we're going to do. All right, that's that's good. You're going to get a, a good it's going to get crazy pretty fast, but I think it'll be good to know the rules a little bit. So this way we'll all make those tactical decisions, live or die, live or die by it. So invader is um, depending on depending on your point of view, it's either the third or fourth version of this game, you know, the first being zombie side. Uh, just regular zombie side, zombie side modern, which is is fantastic. Then we had Black Plague and Green Horde, which is zombie side set in a fantasy setting. And, and of course, the rules are similar throughout all of these, but they're a little bit more streamlined. And now Invader is kind of zombie side in space, zombie side space Hulk. And what I like about it, besides the theme, and I'm a big fan of Black Plague and zombie side modern. I like the idea that the rules play even faster. So some of the missions that have a, a bigger board, I'm going to pull out just a little bit so you can see the size of the board. Some of the missions that have a, a bigger board tend to play a little bit faster. So it's nice to kind of get through them. Okay, so if you played Black Plague and Green Horde, uh, I think the only real change is when you face an abomination, you can concentrate your fire. And you can concentrate your fire on either the tanks or the runners, a specific target. 
So it allows you to take out one target, but any of the dice that spill over in terms of damage don't carry over. So you have a little bit more um, uh, flexibility. And, and naturally, by the nature of the game, Invader being sci-fi tends to want to focus on shooting a little bit more, but you, you've got your close combat and um, assault. So let's, let's look at the mission first, because I know a couple of more people are joining us. We'll look at the mission, then we'll pick the team. We'll go through and pick the team. And then we'll pick the abominations. Yes, yeah, so a big thing about the zombie side games is you have um, weapons or abilities that set spaces on fire. And you kind of need those items to defeat some of the abominations, some of these, these bigger monsters. Uh, Invader lets you target them independently. So there's still a couple of items that are going to burn things like a flamethrower, but it's not, it's not mandatory to find that. So it's a little bit easier. Uh, so let's pull out. I'll show you guys the board. This is the first mission for the setup. And uh, the idea, the backstory, there's a little bit of a backstory where this is a mining colony for Xenium, which is some fuel that powers rockets and, and all sorts of equipment, sci-fi in the future. And something's happened and now the base is being overrun. Invaders. And there's three, there's a couple of different classifications of invaders. First are these guys. The, the workers. So these are like the generic grunts. They're going to move one space. They'll make one attack. They have one health. So you can kind of chew through them pretty quickly, but they could be dangerous in, in numbers. Then we've got the tanks. So we'll push these guys over. Uh, these guys, they move one activation. They attack one activation, but they have multiple wounds. So what you begin to see with them is you need to score a number of hits or have certain weapons that can deal a good amount of dice on there, naturally being tanks. And in, in large groups, you got to be careful because it's hard to chew through them. They don't have one wound each. So we kind of need to be aware of them. The third group are Seekers, which if you played 40K, think of these guys as gene stealers. They have one wound each, but they make multiple activations. So what this means is every time they activate, they move two spaces. So very quickly, when these guys appear, uh, they can be on one side of the board, but they're going to move very, very fast. And if they land in a space where the group is, they can deal two wounds. So we're going to kind of keep an eye on them. And then sprinkled in the spawn deck are abominations. In the base game... You've got these guys, you've got the mold abomination, and then there's other abominations that you can add and throw in. Now, for balance, you're only supposed to play with one. I mean, nothing's stopping you from throwing in two or three, and some games are fun like that, but it's going to get really swingy really fast. We're going to include the mold abomination, and we'll throw in one more. going to kind of make things a little bit harder. To play a little bit more challenging especially on a smaller board um we'll we'll just we'll see how it goes we'll see how it it goes so the rules for the game um you can what you can see here are spaces each space is defined and you have we're going to play with six heroes we're going to go through and select the heroes every turn you have a number of activations where you can move you can search and you can shoot so when you move, you move from zone to zone. When you shoot, depending on the range of the weapon, there'll be zones. After all of the heroes have gone, then any of the zombies, invaders that are on the board, they activate. And they move with a very simple AI of just, depending on what they hear, what they see, that's where they're gonna move. And then there are these spawn points here and here, where you flip over cards and more invaders come in. The final difference, if you're coming from Black Plague or Modern, there's these mold points on the board. And they kind of represent um, spawn pits or places that zombies can just emerge from. So depending on the cards, some might spawn from there. Um, they might move from there. 
And as the abominations deploy, they create mold. So it's going to get um, really interesting really fast from that perspective. The other change before we jump in and select the party is uh, compared to modern or Black Plague Green Horde, you have a sentry gun and you have a robot that can be tr controlled either by a character or by getting the appropriate device. These are kind of like non-player characters. You can activate them. Um, they can be destroyed. They can be killed. But they don't count for a loss in the game. So we're going to try and utilize them. Wrecked with two bosses, maybe. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Depends on when they draw. I mean, unless you guys want to do just the standard one abomination. What do you think? Do we want to vote on that right now? I mean, confidence level is high right now. But there is a reputation to uphold. So one abomination or two to toss in. I mean, it is the intro mission. Yeah, we'll do, I think we do two. I mean, we'll, we'll literally roll the dice. We'll randomize it out. We'll do two. Uh, so the mission really quick, because that's going to influence who we select. We're going to start here. And the first thing we have to do is collect the experimental weapon here, marked by that objective, and then make it to the exit point here. So we have to navigate through. Uh, oh, really quick, another change is you have inside zones here and outside zones. So in order to move to an outside zone, you have to move through an airlock here, there, and into here. When you're in the outside zones, you can't use energy weapons. You can't use ballistic weapons. You can't use machine guns. Um, it's going to have to be close combat. Can you use guns in space? I mean, that was an argument on the Kickstarter with the rules. But that we're going to have to kind of look out for. Yeah, we're going to do two. All right, do we want to pick heroes? We'll, we'll, we'll pick the heroes through. We'll go through. So we need a team of um, six. And I've got the dashboards here behind uh, the camera. I'll just kind of control them, but we'll, we'll put the miniatures out. So there's two types of um, adventurers, heroes, actors in the game. There's soldiers and civilians. The soldiers tend to have a little bit more uh, life points, but they can only search in the armory rooms, the red rooms. The um, civilians, they represent scientists and other people. Um, the scientists can search in any of the rooms, but they have less life. Tom, welcome in the UK. I, well, we'll see. I'm hoping this will be a, a medium-sized game. I hope we're not going to get killed um, right out the gate. But there's going to be no going back. There's no redos. There's no nothing. Whatever decisions we make, um, we literally live or die from. So let's pull out. How about we'll do this? We'll do... Um, we'll make two piles. We'll go through two passes. I'll put out a hero an actor, and you guys just give a thumbs up, yes or no, or include or not, and we'll put all the ones we possibly want to pick from in the include pile, and then the rest we'll, we'll put out. So we'll go through there. So the first here, Commander Amadi, three life, um, shove, he can push back some of them, he's got good actions, keep them, or discard. What do you guys think? That's, that's kind of the first choice. Let's go through second. Just sorting through a couple of the cards here. Yeah, he's. I think he's one of the more powerful characters because he's got three life. Um, he has, right off the beginning, the ability to shove, uh, to push... Xenos back to push aliens back. Yeah, he's he's a tank. He's good. I, I usually play him. So maybe we'll just we'll we'll include him to start. And let me pull out his miniature here. So that's gonna be we've got him. So we'll include him. So we gotta pick six. Um the next one that I'm gonna recommend. 
is um her Mitsuki because she starts out with this remote control bot um, that gives her the ability she's a civilian so as you can see she's only got two life but that's gonna give her the ability to control this bot back there and I think we desperately need that um, on the team because it's it's either her or Dr. What that can automatically control these bots and sentry guns without grabbing things. Although Dr. What's a little bit um, different. Yeah, six guys. That's that's kind of the, the standard mission. Oh, and in, in Invader, if you lose one of your characters, the whole game loses. The whole team loses. With the exception if the sentry gun or the bot gets destroyed. So we'll pick her. Um, is anybody a fan of Dune? Yeah, Dr. What, the, the parodies. Do you want me to throw in Dr. What too? We could tag team the bot and the and the gun, sentry gun. You know, we could we could do we could do them. Toss them in. All right, so we've got one soldier, two civilians. And Dr. Watt and Mitsuki can run the bot. They could run the sentry gun. We've got a tank. Uh, maybe another tank. We've got Jared. Um, he has shove also. So we'll do Jared. Uh, shove is important because that's an action that when... Uh, we're we're going to choose six characters. And right now we've got four. Shove is going to let, if there's aliens in your space as a free action, you can push them back one. So I think that's going to be, uh, I'm not trying to metagame things, but with, with two abominations, we're going to need all the help um, that we can. So we've got two civilians, two soldiers. Let's uh, see what else we can pull through. Turn a boat. Hello. Welcome. We're, we're picking our characters to play. We're going through. There's about probably 20 or 30. Uh, let's move this over. Um, uh, the character pool is essentially everyone from the Kickstarter that we can pull in. Uh, healing, there are, there are no real heals in the game, um, unless you're dealing with some of the expansions, which we're not. So the, these uh, numbers here, they're life points. Two life, three life. So the civilians, they're, they're going to get killed pretty fast, so we're going to have to protect them. I mean, I don't think we'd ever go in with a full civilian team. Um, but likewise, if you load up on just soldiers, uh, the soldiers can only search in these armory spots. So that'll be limited with their with their gear that they can bring. Um, I was thinking of taking, I mean, obviously a Dune reference here, but he has this uh, zero G run ability, which lets him move really fast. So we'll maybe. Yeah, he's he's totally from Dune. You know, this is a um, a lot of these characters are are um, complete ripoffs. We've got her, but ripoffs in a good way. We'll just put Emma there, and one more. Um, I guess we got to play McFly from Back to the Future. I mean, if you're if you're playing the doctor, maybe we got to go with him too, right? Just for the, the narrative. So let me pull him out. Uh, we've almost got our team set up. Let me just find his miniature in here. Um, I had these guys sorted pretty well, but I think they moved a little. There he is. 
So we got McFly. We got the doctor. We, so we need uh, one, two, three, four, five. So we need one more. Do we go with Emma? Or keep the spice flowing and uh, go with Harker on there. Emma's tough, so she can ignore the first wound out of every one. That, that makes her a little bit more powerful. Yeah, I'm glad you guys could, could join me. Just roll some dice. We'll have some fun, see what we can do. I'm a, I'm a massive Dune fan, so it's, it's just kind of... Uh, usually when we play this with the group, uh, I've got first dibs on Hugo Harker. All right, so we've, we've got our six. We've got our team. All right, so here, here's the team what we got. We've got Jared. So we're going to put him up there to deploy. And I'm going to snap on. Uh, the bases are color-coordinated to the dashboards. And I'll move the camera up there um, once we get ready to play. Then number two, Commander Amadi. So we got two soldiers. Put him up there. Then we'll do um, Hugo Harker. We'll do Suki. I'd be down for some spice. I, I don't know if I'd like a navigator guild, but go that crazy. And we've got Dr. What? So the next piece before we jump off, you, um, you start with some starting gear in the game, which basically breaks down to um, machine guns and cattle prods. And every character gets one. So we have to figure out how to distribute this. Um, I think just the standard distribution is on the soldiers, give them the guns because they can shoot, uh, but they can search less because again, they can only search in the armory rooms. This way they have some sort of shooting type weapon and then give the rest of our team, the scientists, the cattle prods and let them search kind of anywhere we can go and, and see how, the, how they move through. So we'll just put these down. And again, this is just starting gear. I'm going to try and grab as much stuff as we can. All right, so that, that's set up. I'm just going to adjust the dashboards for the life. Reset the experience. All right, last choice. And now this is what I'm going to leave up to you guys. Abomination. So the base abomination is this spoiler abomination, which when he moves and deploys, he puts out this mold. Uh, yeah, civilians can search anywhere except for mold zones. They can search anywhere. The Soldiers can only search in the armory. So rules-wise, that's kind of the trade-off where soldiers are a little more powerful, but they can only search in one place. Civilians, you have the versatility to search um, a little bit more. So we're going to include him. Here's, here's the choice between the two. We've got the Shadow Abomination, which is essentially the, the Queen Mother from Aliens. Shadow Abomination, you can only kill in close combat. So as an example, if, if we're out here deployed out and it spawns, we can't shoot into this space. Her special rule is you actually have to move into the space and engage in close combat. That makes it challenging because as she moves across the board, you can't target her. But by moving into her space to try and kill her, if you don't, she's going to strike back. So that's, that's the first abomination choice. Um, second is the babyface abomination. Think of, think of chaos spawn. Uh, babyface, when it activates, all other abomin when the babyface is killed, all the other aliens on the board go nuts and they get one extra activation immediately. 
So those are kind of the, each abomination has um, a special rule. So I'm going to let you guys call it. Or we could D6 it, but I'd rather have you guys make that decision so I have a little bit of deniability. Are we going with Babyface? Or are we going with the Shadow Abomination? What's the vote? First one in calls it. Shadow. There, okay, there we go. Yeah, I think the Shadow's a little more fun to play. We'll mix it up. Babyface. All right, well, Shadow has it so far, unless we get another Babyface or two. Give you, like, another 10 seconds here. We'll, we'll, we'll throw in the... Um, the Shadow Abomination. So the way it works, these three cards, or excuse me, four cards, get sorted into the deck, the spawn deck. And when they appear, that's when the, the Shadow Abomination will appear. So I'm going to seed the spawn deck. There's our spawn deck. I didn't cheat. I didn't look. And we're... I th oh, the only other rule, and then we're ready to start it off, is in order to move into these outside zones, you need an oxygen tank. And you get the oxygen tanks from... Let me pull it so we can see it. These rooms here, O2, oxygen. So before we can make it to the objective... Um, we have to grab oxygen. So it's interesting in Invader, there's a couple of sub rules and sub tactics that you have to figure out as we go. All right, you guys, you guys ready to do this? We're ready to, to start. We've got the team up there. We've got the starting gear kitted out. Um, these two soldier guys here, yellow and blue, are the ones that have submachine guns, pistols to start. Everyone else has a cattle prod, and we're gonna try and get some more um, gear as we go. Yeah, so in the spawn deck here are workers, seekers, abominations, spawn points, the, the kind of AI engine of the game that's gonna determine what things happen. So we'll see, hopefully we don't draw one straight out. So Jared's going to go first. That's him here. And you get, you're able to do, uh, each turn you get three actions. And you can move, search, open a door, or shoot, or move into the assault. I'll pull out for a second. We're trying to get to that exit. We're trying to get to the exit sign on there. So what you're seeing right now facing north, we got to get to the southern side. First move. You can't search. Where do we want to move? Do you want to move into here? Search and then maybe take some shots at those guys and, and try to kill them out. I mean, that's, that's kind of a good... Yes, all the actors need to make it to the exit to win. Um, the robot here and the sentry gun, they're expendable. They, they don't count towards win or lose. So it's very much a cooperative all or nothing to get there. So I'm thinking we'll do um, first move, move him into the armory. Second move, we'll have him search. Now to search, there's a, a search deck here. So we're going to search. You take the top card. And he's got... He found a searchlight. So next time we could draw two cards. And now he's... I think he's going to shoot. He's going to spend his, his third action to shoot. So he has a... Um, the way shooting works is... I'll pull this out. This is his weapon. You can see on the bottom, the 1-1 one -one is the range. That's how many dice you roll. So he's going to roll 2d6. 
and uh, for a five or higher, he scores a kill of one wound. Yes, so searching, you can search rooms multiple times, but only once per turn, unless there's a special rule. Some of the actors have a special rule. So he he searched um, Fog of War. That's from a green um, uh, from Green Horde. There's no there's no Fog of War, but you just can't shoot outside. So because there's a door here, we can shoot into there. We'll take a shot. Uh, we need fives or higher. That's going to be sixes. No, that's actually a one. I'm sorry. That's the six. So he completely misses. That's that's the first turn. He is he is done. He moved in one action. He searched one action, and his third action was to fire in on the workers in the airlock, and it didn't quite work out. But that that's all right. We'll see. Second is um, Commander Amadi. Blue. So I'm I'm thinking the same thing, right? What do you guys think? Just move up because he's a soldier. Right? He's a soldier. So have him move up, search, get some gear, and uh, roll some dice. So first action, move up. Second action, search. Uh, he has an energy cell. All right, so he gets... Um, you can't use this with the submachine gun, but that would let us re-roll. Um, and in the search deck are close combat weapons, equipment, guns. I mean, I'm hoping to draw some guns, but it didn't quite work out. He's going to fire with his pistol. He gets two shots, and he hits on fives or higher. Uh, okay, so he misses also. At least this is in 40K, and I'm, I'm missing all my, my shots. So he's done. So now we've got our, our civilians. We've got Hugo up next. He can use his ability zero G run and move two spaces, uh, essentially for the price of one. Now the rest of our team up here, they, they only have close combat weapons. And when these guys activate, they're gonna move into this zone. And then we're gonna have to fight them out. Um, unless we use the bot. Off to a great start. Well, yeah, I'm trying to be optimistic here. I was, I was hoping to take out both of those workers. But, you know, the dice are the dice. We got to um, live or, or die by them. So I'm thinking um, move Hugo into this room. Right? What if we did this? Activate a zero G. One, two. That'll be his first move. He's a civilian, so he can search in, in any room, and we'll have him search. All right, so you found a heavy shotgun. So you can see this does range one to two. Two dice, yeah, we're going to activate the bot. That might be the saving um, grace. He hits on a four higher and two. So Hugo's got a shotgun. That's his second activation. And third activation, he has a range of one to two. So I'm going to move this a little bit so you guys can see. The shotgun has a range of one or two. So maybe we'll have him blast uh, with the shotgun. So he's got two dice, uh, four or higher to hit. And he misses both those shots too. He missed. Okay, he's he's done. I'm gonna kind of move these guys back so you can see. Um, next is Mitsuki. So she has the ability to activate this this bot, and she can spend one uh, she can spend one activation to have the bot do something to move to shoot. The challenge with um, the bot activation is she won't be able to then move. So what you find is, because she's spending that turn activating, what you find is that if you activate the bot too much, whoever's activating it gets left behind and can quickly get overwhelmed. So I'm thinking maybe we'll um, maybe we'll move her up too. What if we do this? Yeah, the shotgun. That's that's good. I mean that's that kind of makes up. Uh, Hugo grabbed the shotgun here. 
when he searched. That kind of makes up for the misses because at least the next turn will start a, a little stronger in, in theory. So what if we go um, one, two to activate and then we'll spend one turn to activate the bot and the bot will move in here. This way next turn the bot can do some close combat when these workers, when they move in. All right, two team members left. And then we'll activate the spawns. Uh, so we've got McFly. I mean, he's Morty McAllister. We're just going to call him McFly. I think what we'll do is go one, two, and we'll have him search. So he found a submachine gun. That's that's a okay start. Yeah, so the, the bot and the sentry gun down here, they can be activated remotely by a character if they have the ability. So one of the reasons why we selected her was she has the ability right off the bat and the Dr. What has the ability too. Otherwise you have to find the remotes that are scattered about, uh, but we can bypass that. So we searched, he's done. The Doctor will go one activation, two activations, and third activation, he will search. And he found an assault shotgun, which is really good. Three attack dice, hits on three or higher. Uh, so essentially, he's kind of a space marine with that. So let's pull out. That's the first turn. So now the phase of the game, um, you move any of the aliens on the table, and then you spawn. And the aliens are going to move um, based on line of sight, based on sound. Uh, they find they follow a simple AI, but you get overwhelmed pretty quick, and they activate in order. So first, these guys are going to move up one into this space. So now they're in there. Um, we can't leave unless we kill them, and we have to kill them with close combat weapons. These workers out here, they're going to move up one. Yes, you, you can trade between characters, but it, it takes an action point. So we'll have to decide. Um, Hugo Harker, who got the heavy shotgun, and Dr. Watt, who got the assault shotgun. These guys here, these two, I, maybe we want to swap them. Um, we'll have to see. These guys are going to move up one. And the seeker right here, remember, these guys move fast, so he's going to go one, two. So that's 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 what we're looking at. Getting closer. Now the, the spawn points happen. So we have these areas here, and these represent like reinforcements and things moving out. So we're going to do a spawn card. So the first one is going to be two hunters. So you go one, two. And then up here in the mold zone, we've got another spawn. Uh, spoiler abomination. That's, that's going to be a problem. Pull a moment of silence. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, but we have to adapt. So he spawns up there. He's got three wounds. Okay, so that's that's turn one. That's That's a complete turn of the game. We started to move out. Um, we missed those first couple of shots, which I'm a little sad face about. I, I was hoping to take out at least these guys here. Um, but we got the combat shotgun. We've got assault shotgun. We're, we're doing okay. We've got the bot. We do have a spoiler abomination popping up up there. That's going to be a problem. So the way concentrated fire works, uh, and it can be either for shooting or assault, you declare whatever your attack dice are, however many you roll, you put them all on one target. So literally you're, you're calling out that one target. But if you hit and do more damage, it doesn't spill over to the other targets. Where if you just kind of shoot or attack in general, if you kill one alien, you can kill multiples, it kind of goes through. 
so that's that's something we kind of have to um decide the other big question in all the zombie side games is when an abomination does on like we have here we got to make the decision are we going to try and take it out or are we going to run you know i mean look the, you know it's survival there's nothing wrong with running and as much as i want to get glory and and try to blow up everything on the table uh, sometimes that's necessary if these if the abomination spawns on the other side of the table usually you can run but i i think he's he's pretty close i don't quite know how that's gonna work all right so we're at the top of two top of turn two confidence level yeah, so if he that uh, he's going to start spreading mold, this guy up here, he's going to spread mold, which can spawn more guys. Um, but in order to get to him, we got to kind of break through here, so we can maybe try to kill these guys, wait for this abomination to move up, and then just try to engage. I mean, that's that's a possibility. But we've also got over on this side, these guys are going to be start pouring in, moving through there. So we gotta we gotta make some some choices of of what to do. And what I like about this game, on a side note, is I mean we're I'm playing all the characters. You guys are helping me, but it's a lot of fun with if you can get three, four, five, six players together. I mean if you have three players, they can do two characters each. You gotta kind of strategize and and figure out what you're doing because literally things change every turn depending on what's on the table, what's what's going on. So Commander Armadi is up first. That's him here. He has a submachine gun. It has a range of one to one. So he um he actually can't do anything yet because he doesn't have a close combat weapon. So we can kind of have him move out of the way. Now, that might be an idea. But it's going to cost him movement points because there's workers already in there. So we can have him move one, have him move into here. That's going to take up his movement, right? Because it takes uh, two movement points because there's two aliens in there. And then it takes one movement point for him to actually move out. Then we've got um, Hugo Harker going next. So Hugo's here. I think we should have him shoot. Let me pull the, the screen up a little bit. We've got Hugo going. He's the one who has the heavy shotgun. If he shoots into here and you miss, there's a chance. Well, not a chance. If you shoot into this zone, then if we miss, he'll take the wounds. If we shoot into this zone, it's okay, and that'll clear up for the abomination. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna blast. We're gonna see what we can do. Hugo's gonna turn around. Um, he's gonna shoot in there. Target priority in the game. The tanks, unless you're concentrating fire, the tanks get hit first, and then the workers, because the combat shotgun does two points of damage per hit. It'll it'll chew through the tanks. So we're gonna shoot two dice, four or higher. So we score one hit. That's going to take out this tank. And Hugo gets an experience point. Well, okay, so the abomination. Um, that's that's the question. I mean, do we ignore him and just run? I think if we can blast through here and start moving down, do we run away from him? He spawns mold. Um, do we fight him? I mean, in theory, we could kill him with some some concentrated fire. Uh, we might not have that much of a of a choice. So Hugo's first activation was to shoot. He's going to activate again and shoot. So that's a six that takes out this worker. I mean, he's just a civilian. He's he's already wrecking. Um, he has one more move. He has one more thing he can do. I don't necessarily want to run him in here because remember this guy's going to activate one, two, he's going to activate. They're going to um, pull in there. So maybe we want to, did the first hit? No, I needed fours or higher. Yeah, the first hit. So the first hit took this guy out. 
because you needed a four or higher, does two damage. And then the second one hit there. Uh, let's have Hugo, let's have Hugo search. He's in this room, he can search. And he's got a search drone. So I can search in any type of building or zone. I mean, that's good if he was a soldier. He could search. All right, so he's, Hugo's done. Now we've got Mitsuki here. She can activate the bot or she can do stuff herself. Uh, I think it's tactically just a no-brainer, right? Just activate the bot, have the bot smash through some stuff. Um, maybe then, depending on how we do, have the bot shoot and kill these guys. That's that's gonna. That's just gonna. Yes, the bot has both. Let's pull them out, pull out this miniature. So it's, it's it's a very Adeptus Mechanicus inspired miniature. So the bot has both close combat and shooting. So we'll have um, Mitsuki here activate the bot with her ability. The bot is going to do close combat, three attacks, fours or higher. So two hits. That's just going to pulp these guys. Take them out. Right, we had another four or higher, but there's only three guys. That was Mitsuki's first activation. Yeah, clear the escape path. Second activation, the bot can shoot up to three spaces. So we can do one two um, but actually you can't draw sight through the airlock because it opens or closes so that's going to kind of determine that uh, let's have the bot yeah the bot is a beast um, and the the bot is expendable if we lose the bot it's not um, mission critical so maybe we'll leave the bot to cover our flank we'll have mitsuki search and she's got a light machine gun. She has one action left. Let's have the light machine gun go to Jared. Because Jared's in the same space. So she's going to pass it to him. Um, Marty McFly activates next. So he's here. Yeah, I mean, decisions back and forth. Um, I think he's just going to search and hang out. Because we can't draw a line of sight through the airlock. Well, actually, we could do this. What do you guys think about this? Um, he has a weapon. So he could go one move here. Shoot. Try to kill him. Hopefully we nail it. And if not, um, well, either way, kill him or not, move back to here. So we can do one. We can have him shoot with the machine gun. Uh, two attacks, five or higher, missed, and then have him activate and run back. Uh, now we've got Dr. What. So here's a decision for you guys. I'll pull out. We've got these guys here. They run fast. We've got the sentry gun here. Dr. What has an ability, remote control sentry gun. We can have him shoot the sentry gun at these guys so um or he has the assault shotgun so i'm gonna this is where you guys are gonna make the decision we can have him move into here shoot and kill this guy and then move back that begins to clear a path or we can have him activate the sentry gun piece here and shoot down i, I think clear the corridor is better I think down here is going to be the better choice just to kind of clear up some space for that abomination. Um, your, your thoughts first, first, first comment calls it. Yeah. Blast the seeker in the mold. I, I think that's, I, I think that's tactically, that's tactically good. So first activation here, he's going to use the assault shotgun, three dice hits three or higher. Which is misses. I mean, this is this is awful. I might have to have you guys start rolling some dice. This has never been um, that bad, but it is what it is. And then he's going to move back. So we've taken two shots at this guy. 
Um, yeah, so the equipment, uh, let me pull out the dashboard really quick so you guys can see what each character has. This is what I'm kind of managing behind the scene. So Dr. What, you have slots for hands. So right now he's got the cattle prod, he's got the shotgun. You put equipment up here, you have room to trade cards. You've got your life points, you've got experience. Um, so it's kind of like this little control panel for each character. So we've got two characters left to activate. Let's pull up here, see what we've got. We've got um, Jared and we've got Commander Amadi. I think Jared is, is the same thing. I think that's kind of, kind of a given. I'm just going to make the move. So he's going to go first move to here. He's going to shoot with the light machine gun. So this is actually five dice, two, four, five dice. He's got light machine gun, five dice, hits on fives or higher. Uh, I can't, I can't see this messing up. I can't see us missing all this. Yeah, there we go. There's kind of a better roll. Well, two hits. So he's got two hits. That's going to pulp this guy. He's just going to explode. And for his next action, he's going to move back to here. That puts us at Commander Amadi. Um, he'll search, right? He'll search. Heavy shotgun. That's excellent. Now we're gearing up. Second move, he's going to move into here. And then he's going to pause. All right, so that's... Um, can you overwatch? You you can't you can't overwatch. That's what makes it a little bit challenging because you have to anticipate where they're going to move, um, how things are going to happen. You can't really do defensively. So first thing we do is um, we move. These guys are going to move into the airlock. The seekers are going to move two spaces. One, two, one, two. The abomination. Down here is going to move forward, so he makes a mold zone. He's going to face us. And now we've got spawns to do. So the first spawn point is going to be down here. It's going to spawn two workers. So one, two, and then up here is going to be the other spawn. I, I did randomize the deck. I did mix everything up. What are the odds of... What are the odds of the other Abomination showing up right now? Full deck. I mean, I seated the deck four cards out of a deck of maybe 60 or so. Let's see what we get up there. All right, so this is actually an interesting spawn. We spawn one worker on each active mold zone. So that means these guys start coming literally out of the mold. One, two, three. This is where the mold zones get kind of dangerous because if you don't, um, if you don't start chewing through them or getting rid of the spoiler abomination, you get a mold zone and, and that's it. All right, top of round three. Tactically, we've got the abomination here we're going to have to take out. We could maybe do it. Remove these guys. Move into this zone here. Um, maybe have the bot just cover cover us. Because this, this whole group here is going to start moving down. And I think, um, I don't think we want to head down that way. Can you get rid of the mold? Yes, um, if you have a flamethrower, what happens is the tiles get turned over to a burnt side. And um, mold, whether it's active or not, it destroys everything in the room. So you, you're not able to, to search with it. So tactically, you also have to take that into account if there's, if there's things to search or, or where you wanna go. So we've got Hugo Harker going first. Um, the, the order of the characters shift every turn, so it's not the same character acting first every time. 
So we've got Hugo here. I'm going to pull this up. Uh, Hugo has the heavy shotgun. Four sh uh, two shots, four higher, two wounds. If he concentrates fire on the abomination and rolls legendary, we could kill it because the abomination needs three damage. So I think let's just um, let's expend some shots and then see if he can take out the abomination. So he's going to have two dice to roll. And he's going to need four or higher. So we need two hits. Four or higher, two 50% chances to hit. First hit happens, does two damage, but it's not um, it's not going to kill him. Second activation for Hugo, he's going to shoot again. Hits, but not enough. Um, third activation, he's going to shoot again. And he misses. So he's done. Yeah, I, I was hoping, I mean, that's that's kind of a long shot, but I, I don't want to move in. So now we've got um, Mitsuki. She's over here. She has the ability to activate the bot. What do you guys think? Uh, Mitsuki has three activations, and while I don't want to get bogged down in this, this one room, uh, we're getting a little bit squeezed here. So maybe spend one point shoot into this mess we'll do some damage it's, it's wall to wall in there we'll, we'll kind of slow things down then spend a second turn to bring the bot into here and a third turn to, the third activation to shoot the bot at the abomination so shoot move and shoot um, i think we'll kill some of those aliens to the left the abomination um I, we have to see with, with the d dice that we can generate. You get five dice, but you hit on fives, and we need three wounds. It's going to be... I don't really like those odds, but we'll, we'll, we'll try it. We'll see what happens. I was hoping the Abomination would spawn a, a little bit later, but that's... If you played Invader or any of the other zombie sides, you know, like, that's that could just happen. That could just, that could just happen. So, all right, first activation, Bot, is going to shoot. Five dice. We need fives or higher to hit. We've got two hits. Takes out the two workers because there's target priority. Then uh, can we? Uh, we we could. Because we've got a light machine gun coming up. We've got a heavy shotgun coming up on Jared, Commander Amadi. Um, we, we might be able to. It's going to be tough. So what do you guys think? We have two activations left on the bot. Shoot again and then move. Or move into this group here and shoot at the Abomination. That's, that's the question. The, the decision to be um, to be made with her. Yeah, let's let's try it. I mean, it's going to be a little hard, but clear the seekers out. Well, hmm. Yeah, seekers will move too. So they're going to go one. Actually, they're going to move here. Actually I, actually, I take that back, guys. We, we got to take out the Seekers because the bot activated and shot. So that means it's a target. That means if we don't kill these guys, they're going to move one here, attack, and destroy the bot. So we either have to take them out or we have to move into here. They'll activate one, two, then they'll be in our group. Yeah, we're going to have to shoot. Two, three, four, five. Uh, shooting again in there. We need fives. There we go. Two hits. Blast these guys. That's that's going to secure the flank a little bit. And we have one activation left. So why don't we just um, move the bot up into this group? Advance the bot up. All right, we've got um, Morty McAllister.
So Morty, um, he he can't really do that much. He's got a machine gun. He's got the cattle prod. Um, the abomination is the target priority. Actually, we'll do this. We'll tell him he's going to concentrate fire on him. Two dice, five or higher. He's got two hits. That takes him out. That's his first move. Second move, he'll search again. And that didn't quite work out. So when you search, sometimes in the search deck, there's also these surprise activations. Spawn one tank on every mold. So I got to pull out a little. So that's going to punish you for searching. So he pops out from the mold. He pops out. Boom, boom. That's what that looks like. Yeah, that the the, the tank. We could have dealt with um, the workers on the mold, but popping out three tanks. Uh, that's gonna slow us down a little bit. I got greedy. I, I got greedy. You know, I was searching. I mean, technically, Morty's kind of kitted out okay with the machine gun and the cattle prod. Um, the search. That 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 hurt us. So he shot. He searched. He has one move left, so he's going to concentrate fire, shooting into here on the tank. It's a long shot, one hit, but it's not enough to do any damage. So now we've got Dr. What is up. He has an assault shotgun. Um, three dice, three damage. So let's have him do this. Oh, it's not, it's not game over yet. We're not, we're not going down. Um, this is supposed to be an easy mission. But we'll, we'll see. So Dr. What is going to shoot into here. He's going to focus fire on the tank. I need threes or higher. I hit. One, two, three. Three damage. Takes him out. So that clears that. Um, his second activation. I'll pull back. We're going to activate the sentry gun here because he has the ability. We're going to target those guys. Just see what we can clear off um, four dice for the sentry gun hits on fours or higher one hit kills him and he has one action left so I'm gonna let you guys pick the activation of what we want to do does he want to search I mean we could try to shoot at the abomination but he'd have to hit on all three dice so I guess here's the choices. Have him shoot at the Abomination. He gets three dice, but I need to score all three hits. Three or higher. So three, three or higher's. He could do that. He could search. But I don't know. What are the odds of pulling another mold spawn? I mean, just I'm, I'm a little bit paranoid about that now. Or he can activate the sentry gun and shoot down there and... and take out those guys so if you guys were controlling dr what what would we do sentry gun shoot at the abomination or get greedy and, and search and i'm a little bit scared about searching right now because that that hurt us last turn dice god us okay you called it dr what could happen could get lucky he's going to turn he's going to use the assault shotgun uh, three dice, threes or higher. Scores one hit, misses the other two. So he just blasts it and, and nothing. I mean, it was a long shot, but it, it, it could have happened. And I think you're right. They do owe us a... They owed us some sort of roll. They owed us something on there. Okay, we've got two left. And then things are going to get really crazy. We've got Jared and Commander Amadi. Jared's got a light machine gun. Light machine gun does five dice, but hits five or higher. Only one point of damage. So do we just blast the abomination with the light machine gun? I mean, we're going to need kind of legendary rolling. But if we don't clear out this abomination, it's going to move in this turn. It's not going to attack, but then we, we're, we're just sunk in. And these guys are going to start pouring in. I mean, if we can at least clear these guys 
and then next turn blast them. Um, what do you guys think? Jared, light machine gun, just rock and roll on the abomination. Try to go for it. We got five dice hitting on fives or higher, one point of damage each. Yeah, three three times on five up. You guys playing 40K, you know, I, those odds. Um, we can't have him search because he's a soldier and we're not in the armory room. Um, that's, that's the only challenge. That's, that's the trade-off between soldiers and civilians. I, I can't see him moving anywhere. Um, I mean, we, we could have him move up into this room here, but it's, we might get kind of, yeah, I guess, I guess shoot. I don't like those odds either, but it's, it's where we're at. So he's going to do two, he's got five dice. Fives are higher. One, two, three. All right, well, there we go. So he scores three hits, three points of damage. That's enough to pulp the abomination. He's going to get that experience. He has two activations left. I feel a little bit better right now. I feel a little more confidence level just went up, went up a notch. Um, he has two more activations. I think he's kind of stuck because I don't want to move him in here and get spawned. I don't want to move into here and and have him go that way. Um, so he'll he'll just he'll he'll hang out. We've got one activation left. We've got Commander Amadi, who is right here. He's got the heavy shotgun. Two dice, hits on fours, two damage each. So why don't we do, um, he'll pop into here. Let's start to clear the path. We gotta clear a path. So let's have him shoot here. So he's gonna do um, two dice, fours or higher, he misses. That was the second activation, third activation back to there. So the, the, the team's done. So now we're going to do movement. They're going to move. So we have a, um, a split move. They're going to move to where the noise is and follow. There's noise tokens that you add as you go to kind of keep track of things. I'm, I'm trying to do that a little bit in my mind just to keep, keep the game flowing. Down here, he's going to move up. These guys are going to move into here. And that's what we're looking at. Now we've got to do some spawns. we got to do some spawns. Down here on this spawn zone, we've got four hunters. So these guys spawn here. Four hunters. That's a big spawn, but... Uh, they're going to cross fast, but at least they're on the other side of the table. So we don't have to worry about them for a, a turn or two. And this spawn zone up here, we've got two workers. One. Two. All right, so we're at top of... Top of four. Not that the rounds matter for this mission. Some missions you have to complete in um, a certain number of turns. So the token advances, and we've got Mitsuki here going first. So she can activate the bot. Yeah, it's a little, we're, we're freed up a little bit. I mean, I feel better that the Abomination was blasted. That could have been a problem. I mean, we did sink a lot of dice into it. But at least it's it's out and removed. And if I'm going to meta the game a little bit, if I'm going to be one of those guys, um, there's four Abomination cards in the decks. So we're at least down with one with the spoiler. So a little bit less chance of it spawning. Uh, not that I want to meta things with a, a narrative game. 
like this. So let's have, um, what do you guys think? Have the bot, have Mitsuki activate the bot, blast into here. Just try to try to clear up some stuff, see, see what we can do. Uh, maybe spend multiple activations to try and kill it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We're gonna have the bot just, just blast into that horde. So the bot has five dice, hits on five or higher. I gotta roll one more. Uh, so we have two. That's gonna take out a tank. So that's the first. Because remember, tanks have two. Tanks have two um two life. Now, Mitsuki's been shooting the bot. She's been getting the experience. She now just leveled up. Uh, in each tray, there's an experience zone from blue to yellow to orange to red. And on, on the spawn cards, what you can see here is we started out in the, in the blue zone. Now we're in the yellow zone. So now every spawn is going to spawn more stuff. That's how the game kind of jacks up, where all of a sudden you've just got abominations uh, spawning everywhere. But she does get a free action. Because she leveled up. So on her second action, shoot again. This is action two. Uh, that's going to be missing everything. Third action for the bot. That's going to kill. And she gets one more action because she leveled up. Let's just have her shoot the bot one more time. Try to clear out these workers. Clear a path. We needed fives, right? Yeah, we needed fives, so she missed on there, but that's that's okay. Um, we've got Morty McAllister. Let's have him shoot in. Let's just have him clear a path. Yeah, so uh, really quick, leveling up, what you have to do working as a team, so Mitsuki leveled up. That means she gets a free action and you kind of have like a skill tree, but the other characters are still at the lower zone you want to kind of split your shots up and tactically let everyone play the game so all the characters level up at the same time because otherwise the characters are going to lag a little bit um, and you have to be careful leveling up that you don't level up too fast because then it's just going to spawn more and more abominations but sometimes it's a little hard to level up yeah and it, it makes it makes the aliens angrier you're going to spawn more and more so let's have um, let's have Morty shoot. He's got two shots, five or higher. That's the first action. Second action hits, takes out him. Third action hits, takes out him. So we just have him have him blast away. He gets two experience. Okay, so now here's here's the next decision. We've got um. Dr. Watt going. He can activate the sentry gun. We've got a group of seekers here. We've got four seekers that are going to start moving and, and making their way up. Yeah, the bot's powerful. It is. Um, the key is trying to figure out when you're going to sacrifice that bot, keep it behind to go. So I'm, I'm thinking right now for um, Dr. Watt, shoot the sentry gun here. Get those guys out. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna set we're gonna sentry gun and then we'll see what happens um, from there. Because now we have a, a clear path. If I move the camera, we've got a clear path to move. So I think we want to move as fast as we can through there, but we want to thin this out. So let's do sentry gun. Uh, four dice. Fours are higher to hit. And that is an excellent roll. So we're going to kill three of these guys. One, two, three. That that was good. It's wall to wall in there. Can't miss. Second activation, move to here. Third activation, move to there. Because we want to we want to get that oxygen tank, and then we're going to make our way out. That's going to give us Jared. So let's have Jared go move to here let's have him fire the light machine gun into there it's going to be five dice uh, 
one hit. Let me level him up. And then he'll do one activation to move to here. So we're just going to kind of do the run, run and gun. Run and gun. We've got Commander Amadi, same thing. Move him there. Uh, he's going to shoot combat shotgun. One hit. Takes him out. He'll move to here. We got that lane. We got our opening. We got the opening. Uh, Hugo Harker is going to do zero G run. One, two. Move to here. And search for the oxygen tank. So now he's got the oxygen tank. Uh, every character can pick up an op oxygen tank. There's no limit. We need that oxygen tank to make it out the the um, make it out the wall, make it out into the, the zone. So that's what we're looking at. That was a that was a quick turn. How are you guys feeling right now? I'm I'm feeling much better. I was getting a little nervous. Abomination, a little nervous, but we we cleaned him out. Uh, we got half the team moving up. A little bit of straggler here with um, McFly and Mitsuki. We got to watch out because some guys are coming forward, but we could always leave the bot. Uh, all the team members need oxygen to leave the airlock. So right now, Hugo's got the oxygen. These guys are going to come up, grab the oxygen. Yeah, we cleared them out. Co confidence level's a little higher. I don't want. I didn't want you guys to lose faith with me here in the, in the command room, but I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better. But we got to do spawns. We got to do movement. Let's let's keep it. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it moving. So first is the activations. They're gonna move up. Move up. Activate one two. We got to do spawn points down here. So we've got two hunters that spawn. Because remember now we're at we're at yellow level or gold level depending on the color. Up here, this spawn point. Hopefully, it's a low spawn. Um, six workers, right? Because we're at gold level six. That's uh, that's not the best. One, two, three, four. I mean, could be worse. Five, six. I'll pull out a little. We are at top of five. Um. Yeah, Jared, Jared MVP. Jared cleaned up. That light machine gun mathematically should not have happened. But I guess he was like spray and spray, pray and spray. Uh, leveling up, yes, really quick. Uh, one of the characters here. Let's pull out, because I think this will be um, important for decision making for you guys. I just pulled out Mitsuki. As you level up, there's these pegs. So when she starts at level one, she can control the bot. We leveled up because she got experience. Now she can control the bot and get an extra free action. If she kills more, she can control the bot, free action, and control a machine, which is the sentry gun. So as you level up, you get more stuff, abilities to, to do, but it spawns the um, it spawns the aliens a lot more. So it's really, you know, you want to go God mode and, and spawn up, gear up, but there's a good possibility if you do that, um, good possibility you do that, you get overwhelmed. All right, we got Morty McAllister. He's just, he's just going to run. He's just going to run. He's going to go one, two, three into here. And I think that's a pretty simple move. Uh, Dr. What? He is here. So let's have him go one, pick up the oxygen tank. That's two. And let's have him activate the sentry gun and blast some seekers. Two, four, four dice. Fives are higher. No, fours are higher. Excuse me. Two hits. One, one. All right, Dr. What has just leveled up. He hit orange because he's getting that experience. So he has one more move. Let's just get him into here. 
takes an action to pick up that prototype weapon. This was one of the objectives. We got to get the prototype weapon. We'll, we'll grab that. We'll grab that as we go. Uh, Jared is up here. Let's just have him go one oxygen tank. Um, second move, move into here, pick up the prototype machine gun. That's one of the objectives. So that's his moves, right? Move, oxygen tank. Uh, Commander Amadi, let's have him. He doesn't have, yeah, he only has two experience. So let's, he doesn't really have any, let's just keep moving. He's just going to go one, oxygen tank, oxygen tank, move, oxygen tank, move. Um, Hugo Harker, he's got oxygen, so let's have him go zero G run. One, two. I gotta pull back a little bit. This is good, we're making progress. Zero G run, one, two. Then move, move. So he's at, he's out here, you know, he's on the, the surface of Arrakis here, grabbing that spice. Now a special rules invoked you once you're outside, you can't use any guns except the sentry can activate. Maybe it's like a rail-fed weapon. So I think we're just going to run for the objective, right? Let's just, just run. Mitsuki is going to go one, two, three. Now, the bot didn't activate last turn. So um, since the bot didn't activate, it's inert. They'll just move past it. They'll run past it. That's, that's one of the rules. Um, if we activated it, it would be a target. So right now it's kind of safe until we um, until we move around. Let's move some stuff, spawn some aliens, and and keep running. So movement. I'll pull this up so we could see it, see the movement a little bit better. This horde of workers is just going to be pouring forward. These guys here are going to move in. So now we have to be conscious if we activate the bot. One, two. And let's do spawns down here. So now we're at gold level. Um, extra activation, all workers. So what that means, that's a special card. That means here these guys get an extra turn to activation. So they're literally, I mean, look, she's like looking right behind. It's just this wall. I think we can outrun these guys. I think we can outrun him. He activates. Um, spawn point up here. Tank spawn. Four tanks. Uh, four tanks, two wounds each. But, you know, that the horde is just up there. And, and all we have to do is stay, stay ahead of them. Let's pull out so you guys can see what we got. Yeah, so you can't shoot outside. So that means close combat. That means close combat. And uh, our close combat weapons in, in the spawn deck, we really didn't grab. There's a chainsaw, there's a sledgehammer, there's some other things. We're a little bit weak, but if I pull out, what do you guys think? We've got that horde of aliens up there on the top right. I think we can outrun them. We've got a clear path outside the airlock to the exit zone, and we'll have Dr. What because he has an act extra activation for leveling up, we'll have him cover us with the sentry gun. And we're just going to pray that on that spawn point to the left, no no abominations show up. Uh, this, this is kind of the decision. Shoot, run, um, activate the sentry gun. I think it's kind of overrun a little bit. I don't think it's really going to gain as much right now. I I'm going to vote just for running. Uh, it's not very glorious, but, but the, the mission right now is get to the exit. Uh, what do you guys think? I just I just think run for it. I mean, if I put myself in the narrative, we've got two soldiers, we've got a bunch of civilian scientists. Uh, just we're we're, we're going to run. We're we're going to run. Okay, so Doctor What? He is going to go. Uh, he has oxygen, so he's going to go one, two, 
three activation. He's leveled up, so he gets one more activation four. We've got Jared. He's got oxygen too. So he's just going to go one, two, three. So he's here. Commander Amadi, uh, he's out here. He's going to go one, two, three. Mitsuki, Mitsuki's got the bot. Um, we'll we'll just leave the bot for now. Cause she's she's got to run. Uh, she doesn't have oxygen, so she's gonna have to burn an activation, pick up an oxygen tank, and go one, two, three. Because remember, she's got four activations, so pick up oxygen, run, run, run. Uh, Morty McAllister, he's gonna pick up the oxygen, and he's gonna go one. Two. Let's get all of our actors in the in the in the screen. Did we um? Did I skip Hugo Harker? I think I did. Uh, we didn't move Hugo, did we? Hugo, right here. No, because he was there last turn. I think I think I skipped him. I'm, I'm trying to think of the tactic here. Um, can't go back and see. I'm I'm gonna. I think I skipped him. So we're going to technically move him. So we're going to zero G run one, two. That's his first move. And then he's going to move, move. So he's, he's in the exit. And if this was Dune, he, he totally closed the door. He would, he totally closed the door on him. Uh, let's move some aliens and let's run like crazy. I think we're at, at bottom of sixth. So these guys are just going to be running like crazy. The decision is always when to fight the horde or when to ignore the horde. One, two. Um, I guess, well, technically I should have been moving the seekers first, but that's okay. These guys move up. One, two. We're getting close to the exit. I'm feeling it. Spawns. Let's do the spawn up there. Six workers. Yeah, I, that's good. I thank you, Jim. I mean, Jay. I I skipped them. I went out of turn. Uh, we got six workers spawning up here. One, two, three, four, five, and six workers. Now this is this is the big one, guys. This is this is big. This is the moment. An hour and 15 minutes into the game. This is what it's going to come down to. We've got all of our guys running. we got the horde coming in there. This spawn point here. Hopefully it's light. Hopefully it's not that much. Two hunters. We can, we can deal with that. All right. We are at top of... I, I lost track, but I think... Could, could have been Shadow. Could have been Shadow. Uh, w when we finish, if we're alive, we'll have to cheat and look at the spawn deck just to see what was coming up, you know, to see if we got delayed a turn. But I'm I'm already, confidence level's pretty, pretty good. I shouldn't even be saying that. Uh, let's move Jared. He's up. So he's going to go, this is, this is pretty straightforward. One, two, three. Jared's going to move into there. We've got Commander Amadi. Actually, take, excuse me, take that back. Jared. No, that was Jared. Sorry. Jared's there. Commander Amadi. He's going to go one, two, three. Hugo is just going to hang out. Um, Mitsuki is going to go one, two. Now, this is where things get challenging. Um, we're getting split a little. We've got Morty hanging out back here. If I move her up too far, these these guys are going to activate these two seekers. Um, that yeah. Let's um. Let's 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 uh, let's keep her there. Let's keep her there. I'm not going to activate the bot. I mean, I could. 
uh, thin thin things out a little bit, draw them back. We'll we'll keep the bot. Um, actually, let's do this. She activated one, two. Let's activate the bot one. I moved the bot back because we'll start to draw some of these guys over there because it came active. Um, Morty is just going to run. He's going to go one, two, three. Dr. What with the sentry gun. Let's, let's have him shoot, clear out those seekers, and then make a run for it. He is going to do the sentry gun. Four dice. Four or higher. One hit. That was his first move. Um, second shot. Takes him out. Then he, so those are two activations. He has two left. We're going to go one, two. And that clears out the turn. Let's do some movements. These guys are just going to continue to pour out, just pouring out of the airlock. It's going to activate two. These guys are going to start to get pulled this way. Um, let me pull up. Since we activated the bot, it becomes active for that turn. That was my thought process behind it. So it's going to pull these guys over. I, I don't think that'll make a difference. I think we're close to the end. But who can say? We never know. They'll pull up. Uh, we've got spawns. Let's do the top spawn up there. We've got six workers. Uh, so here's where things get interesting. When you run out of models, they get extra activations. So we are um, we don't have enough workers to place. So these guys are all going to activate. These guys are going to activate. These guys are going to move up. Let me get the camera up. We're getting close. We're going to run it. I think we're going to do it. And then this worker is going to move into there. This spawn point right here. Let's get it in the camera. We got a couple of spaces in. Let's see the spawn. I didn't reveal the card yet. That's going up there. I'm, I'm going to look away for a second and let you guys see it before I do. Is it the shadow abomination? What is it? Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, mold spawn one tank. That's that's okay. I'm, I'm confident about that. We're gonna do. I'm just gonna put out the tanks. And we've got Commander Amadi is up. So this is this is gonna be a, a pretty quick run, right? He's gonna run into here. Hugo Harker is already in the zone. Mitsuki's going to go one, two, three. In the zone, Morty's finally going to move up. One, two, three. Dr. What is going to move into here. Jared, as much as he wants glory, he's going to move into here. That pulls us to the exit. We seal it. We get out. We avoided the horde up there. Um, we got lucky on this spawn point down here, not really generating stuff. That that was the intro mission. Now, I'm normally not one for, for spoilers, and we'll, we'll hang out for a couple of minutes because I know it's getting late with you guys. Uh, let's just see the top three cards, right? We, we just got to know if, like, uh, top four cards, if the game went another two turns, if we got kind of bogged down um, with this, this horde up here for some reason... And we had another two turns. What what would have spawned? Would the shadow abomination? Would the shadow abomination here have shown up? I won't say I'm disappointed that that she didn't show up, but it would it worked out well. So if we had another two turns, we would have gotten some tanks. We would have gotten four hunters. That that could have that could have been a little problematic, but I, I think we could have dealt with it. If we went another turn, it would have been. Extra activation for workers. That would have been interesting with this, this horde down here. That could have messed things up. And it would have spawned more workers. So I, I think we would have been... 
I think we would have been okay. So what do you guys think? Uh, that was a little close with that abomination and, and the little horde up there, but we, we cleared that path. Um, a little rocky start with missing on, on all the weapons. Uh, we got lucky, I think, once we cleared the airlock and moved out into here because our close combat weapons were essentially cattle prods. We, we really didn't have much else. Um, that if we, got spawn, if we got hurt in that spawn zone or we didn't have some good rolls from Dr. Watt on the sentry gun, uh, we, we would have been in trouble. We, we did take a little bit of an easy mode by taking Dr. Watt and Mitsuki. I, I will say that because we had the bot, we had the sentry gun tag teaming. But uh, I, I think it was good. So I wanted to give you guys a taste of Invader here. I mean, it's, it's a light game. It, it plays fast. It is dicey. It is swingy. You know, you could spawn tons and tons of models. You could get some unlucky rolls. I mean, you got to be willing to go with the narrative. But it, it kind of creates that, that tension. Yeah, so my, my plan, I'm, I'm kind of working things up what I'm... Look, what I'm hoping to do is get a schedule, and, and I'll update it on my blog, and I'll, up, I'll push out uh, a notification on the channel. I'm looking to do, like, Monday, hang out, do some Q&A, pull out some 40K models, just, just talk about whatever, board gaming, 40K, battle tech. Um, and then maybe Wednesday or, or Friday, I'm thinking Fridays maybe, Play some board games just like this. Uh, lighter missions, maybe stuff that plays a little bit quicker. You know, I was hoping to do this in, in like an hour and 15 minutes, but I think it played pretty fast. And in terms of the board games, maybe let you guys vote or, or pull out a title you want to see. Um, another option, but there would be spoilers involved. Kingdom Death Monster. Just, just setting up KDM. I've got it up here. I'll pull it up. Um, I, I really want to play Kingdom Death Monster, set it up on the hobby table here and just get it like, you know, every Friday, just just play for like an hour or two, a lantern year. Let you guys make some decisions. We'll roll some dice and um, see where we're going. I'm really leaning towards Kingdom Death Monster because it's it's a game that it it, it, it has a lot of fun. And I, I finished some campaigns. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but the um, some of the other things to hunt, um, the Flower Knight, Executioner, things like that, I, I haven't hunted them all. So there's still a lot of content in the game that I, I haven't even explored. So it would be kind of neat to uh, explore that with you guys. And, and Kingdom Death Monster is a real treat. So I'm, I'm like, unless someone can convince me otherwise, I'm thinking about KDM. I wanted to run this tonight to share with you uh, to share with you, like, Invader that I really enjoy, but also just to work out the kinks in terms of um, I got to get a camera that sits a little higher, so I got to get one of those little tripods, and I got to kind of fix the lighting a little bit better. Um, Warhammer Fantasy RPG, like, we, we could do that too on another night. I, I was I wanted thinking about running Alien RPG, but I wanted to get kind of a couple of times a week just a live, and whoever can drop in, that's great. And just keep it open. Yeah, I'm, 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 unless otherwise, I'm thinking Friday Kingdom Death Monster. Or maybe Wednesday and Friday Kingdom Death Monster. I think it would, um, it, it's a brutal game. It is, it is absolutely, um, brutal in a good way. So tactically, we'll, we'll have to do it. I'm gonna let you guys go. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for popping in. Uh, through the whole game or, or part of the game, I, I really appreciate it. And again, I'm going to try and give um, a little bit more advance notice as I sort out a schedule and see what we can do um, to play. Yeah, I think Invader was good just to, to try it out and see. All right, I'm going to sign off. Uh, be well, stay well, and we'll keep getting that hobby in and playing.